Go. Shall we go? Yeah. Well, good morning. We welcome you again to Abundant Life Christian Center. We're so excited and happy to have you with us. We're still dealing with this topic of faith. Faith is. This is Faith Is, part four. You know, faith is a very important part of our lives as a Christian believer. We live by faith. Faith comes by hearing. We are saved by faith. Faith overcomes faith. Faith is a major part of our life. So we need to operate by faith, and we have to learn how to operate by faith. Why? Because the scripture says in Hebrews that he is, it's impossible to please him without faith. And he is a faith God. Manipulation is not going to get it. What you mean manipulation is not going to get it? You crying, you sobbing, you have your war story, and you're begging, oh God, help me. If he was an emotional God, not, that, not saying he's not a God of love, but if, our, if we were able to pull his emotion strings, then we could kind of control him a little bit with manipulation. Not going to do it. We're going to have to live by this book. And this book is a faith book. It's his book, and he gave it to us. This is how we're going to be able to please him. This is how we're going to get the things done that we need to get done in life. So we're just going to do a recap of some things we discussed. We discussed that um, faith is like on, faith and belief is like on a, a two-sided coin. Faith is the action, the action part of it. It's you acting in what you believe. It's acting, it's action, it's a verb there. Belief is trusting what someone says. And you know, we do that all the time. You know, you get a new job, we discussed it. You get a new job, and they tell you, oh, we're going to give you $50,000 a year. Man, you're excited. You go out there with the credit card, go get your new suit to start work. They never showed you their books. You, they tell you, we're going to give you benefits. Man, you're just excited. You, you, you just start acting on it. What they say, you know, you, you go to work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They told you you're going to get paid on Friday. You act as though you're going to get paid on Friday. And what do you do? If the bill collectors who call, you just tell them, listen, I have your money for you on Friday. How do you know? You just going by what that man said. And it's okay. I'm not beating you up. But if, we're, if we have the ability to act on what a man says, can much more we can trust them what God says? Let's deal with healing. Because in order for you to receive supernatural healing, divine healing, you're going to need faith, right? Let's say, you ask the believer, say, well, do you believe God's able to heal you? Yeah, they, they believe it. But they're still struggling with this sickness or this infirmity. Why? Because they believe it, but they didn't act on it. Oh, I believe God is able. That's one. But you have to believe that he's able to do it for you. And you have to act on it. Because he did his part. He wrote it in the book. The book says that by your stripes, we're healed. We have to act on that. Well, how do I act on it? I'm glad you asked. You have to take the word, this word, and put it in your mouth. And as you say it, you're sowing it. Remember, Jesus said the word is the seed, so we have to sow it. How do I sow it? You get where am I sowing it to? Your soil of your heart, your spirit, the human spirit. So as I plant it, I'm saying the word, and it goes into my spirit, man. And it, how do I water it? Because I got to get water by saying it and saying it and saying it. And that gets that seed in there. And your mouth is the water of that seed to what? Grow up on the inside. So you don't see feathers or, or leaves popping out my shirt. But what you see? There's a tree growing on the inside. You can't see it, but there's a tree on the inside. So we have to say and use our mouth to confess it. 
I got to say the same thing God says. I'm imitating my father. I'm saying what he says. If I say what he's saying, I'm not lying. I'm just stating what he stated. Now, your body might not have lined up uh, with the healing. You want to be healed. You have to affirm that you want that healing by saying his word. And one at a time is not going to get it. You got to say it as though you do believe it. Let me explain it this way. Faith holds the position until the it shows up. You know, the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass. Well, the faith is the it until it shows up. You, you, you got faith there until what you're believing for manifests. Once the manifestation has happened, and it's in your hot little hand. Well, we don't need faith for that anymore. We go to the next thing. So faith is almost like your servant. Faith goes out into the spiritual world and brings it into the three-dimensional world. I hope that helps you there. Remember that faith is always operating, always moving by the word. The word. If it's not in the word, I don't need it. But whatever I need is right here in this word. Yeah. Whatever you need. Every good and perfect thing is in this word. And you can have faith for it and believe it and get manifestation for it. Let's see here. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish. So we have to take the word, find a scripture that pertains to what you need. If it's something pertaining to finances, go to Philippians 4.19. If it's something pertaining to healing scripture, Go to 1 Peter 2.24. Because this, this Bible is like a seed bin. It's full of seeds. You remember when Jesus said the sower sowed the word? And so this is seed. Our house seed is in here. I go to Deuteronomy 6.11. I'm standing on that right now. I'm believing on God for it. Whatever you need is in this book. I got a, a prayer book now. I make jur journal and I'm logging on what I believe. I'm putting the date down. I'm believing God for this on this. And then when the manifestation happens, I can just scratch that off. I got it. So we have to start working this word. Let's go to uh, Mark 11, 24. We're going to pick up right there again. It says, this is what Jesus says. He says, therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. He said you got to believe that you have them. He didn't say you have it. He didn't tell you to lie. He says believe that you have it. you got to believe that you receive them. He said what things soever ye desire, when you pray, when you pray, is the is the time that you pray that is is now so it has to be faith why because it's now now is the present time now i'm teaching this lesson when now this sunday afternoon i'm teaching it when now it's in the present time if you back up to the 23rd verse when he says, he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he, uh, he says shall have is the future. So Jesus says, you're praying when? Now. You use your faith and belief when? Now. I shall have it 
then give you a time, but it's not now. It's only, I believe now. You see that? Um, we've taken this topic and uh, played around with it and put so many myths and skepticisms and religion and philosophy on it that it got watered down and we lost just what Jesus has been teaching us. All the other things that we've heard um, don't even apply. If we could just look at the word and pull out what the word says, if I just say what Jesus said, I'm doing well. I'm doing good. I'm confessing. I'm claiming. I stake my claim to this word, what he says. If the word says it, I have it. It exists in another world. So my job is, when I pray, I have to bring it from that world, the spiritual world, and bring it into the three-dimensional world by what? By my mouth. By my mouth, and use the believing system. I like to call them the duo, the duo, the dy dynamic duo. I apologize, like Batman and Robin. They go together, like peanut butter and jelly. Faith don't work without belief. And belief can't work without faith. They have to work together. Faith just can't go out there by himself. He's just walking like, man, where am I going? He has to know where he's going. Belief can't, can't do anything and, and, and go grab anything. Faith does faith and belief does belief. It, it, everyone is what they, my, 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 my dog is not my cat. I don't have a cat. But my dog is my dog. My car is my car. My suit is my suit. It is what it is. So you can't make them multifaceted. You gotta, you gotta use them where you're at. So let faith operate for you and apply belief to go get the job done. Now, there's a context of scripture I want to go to, I want to deal with. Yes, let's, let's look at what he said again. He says, therefore I said to you, what things soever, when ye pray, he didn't say praying, he says when you pray. Now you know, the Bible says, says, said, saying, it gives us different times. But pray is at the present moment. I'm what? I'm praying. Father, give me revelation knowledge. Let words from heaven come out of my mouth. Help me, cause me to make the complicated simple. Well, that believers may receive it. Well, that's before I pray. I prayed that just now. I prayed that. So Jesus is telling us, you can take what you desire, form it together for a prayer. You know, he's our intercessor. So anything's, uh, anything written, or spoken in out of, out of line. He's our intercessor. The intercessor takes the prayer. He rewrites it anyway and he presents it to the Father. That's why we pray in Jesus' name. So let's look at it like this. When I pray, my desire, I don't have to go to desire over here, I don't have to go to desire over there. When I give my desire and I state it in prayer, according to Mark 11, 24, that when I desire when I pray, that's the time the belief jumps in right then and there on top of faith and hold it. Belief says, I'm going to hold this position. Faith, go get it. 
That's good. The dynamic duo shows up at prayer time. My desire, I got to get my desire to God. My desire. The Bible never says I'm asking for Jesus' desire. My desire. So I'm at the point of prayer. And I'm about to present my prayer. Well, Jesus says, therefore I say to you, what thing you desire, so I got my desire. When you pray at this moment time, right now, faith is right here. Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Believing is holding the position here. Faith is saying, believe, hold on to it. I'm going to get it. Faith goes out and get it. It comes back, brings it back to your hot little hand, and says, okay, believe, you can let go. The job is done. Because he says, and ye shall have them. Ye shall have them. He said it again in the 23rd verse. That way, we don't treat God like a genie. You know, you got a bottle, you ever see the uh, shows with the, the cartoons or the mythical shows that got the, the bottle and you rubbing it and a laugh, you know, a genie comes out. You don't have to do that. You don't have to say, my name is Jimmy and I'll take all you get me. It doesn't operate like that. I told you, you can't man manipulate it. He's just giving us a formula, a spiritual law, if you will, on how to present your repair to him, how to get your needs met, how to get our desires. Because let's face it, we got desires. There's things I want, things my wife wants, those of you want. Well, he's showing us how to get it. He's telling us how to get it. Hmm. Let me, let me, I, I, I gave three little bullets I see here. So what you want to do, you want to find your desire, and you want to pray in faith. Second, you want to believe that you receive them. In prayer, you don't want to just believe, but out of your mouth, you want to say, I believe I receive them. I'm going to repeat, I'm going to repeat what Jesus said. I believe I receive. I believe I receive holds the position as faith goes and gets it. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. And I want to I want to use the proper formula. I want to use the proper combination to get it. So now I want to shift my prayer into thanksgiving. So Monday, let's say um, I got to believe for uh, the rent. No, I got I got to believe for I got to believe for the rent. No, and so I'm believing that I'm, I'm praying that prayer on Monday or Sunday. On Monday, do I have to pray that same thing again because it didn't show up? No. But that's what we've been doing. Well, it didn't show up the next day, so let me pray the same thing. You can pray again, but when you pray, don't ask for the same thing again. What do you want to do? You want to shift that prayer because you just was into petition prayer. Now you want to, you, you're up here in petition prayer. Now you want to down, downshift it and shift it or upshift it and put it in a different mode and call it thanksgiving. So, Father, I just want to thank you. On yesterday, I prayed for the rent note. And I believe that I received it. I want to tell you, Father, I thank you. That I know you're not short of your word. And I trust and I believe you. And I thank you for it. I believe I received it. I never said I had it. I believe I had it. It's different. If I had it, I just pull it up, pick it up, and go pay it. But I'm believing that I receive it by faith. Tuesday shows up. 
The Bible says put him in remembrance. He doesn't have he doesn't have all time, but I got to do what the scripture says. The Bible says put him in remembrance. So I'm putting him in remembrance. Father, I thank you. I thank you on Sunday. I, I asked you for the, the money that I needed to pay my rent, my rent bill. I was thanking you yesterday, and Father, I choose to, to thank you again today. And I thank you, and I believe I receive it. And on Wednesday, and on Thursday, and on Friday. Now, Friday, my wife goes to the mailbox, and the note is thirteen hundred, but she get a check for fifteen hundred. Now, I'm taking that prayer and I'm amping up just a little bit more. Lord, I thank you that I have received what I believe from you. Then you know me and my wife, we shall not we pay the bill. Now that's the extra two hundred. You remember the scripture over there in um, Luke 6, 38, where he says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give it to your bosom. Mm -hmm. Well, he's not only just a faith God, he's so good. He's a God of multiplication. That's one of the reasons I, 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 when, I, when I was seeking up the name of this ministry, this church, it's abundant life. That's what he is. He's abundant. He's more than. Are you mad? Are you mad if you believe in for 200, he gives you 400? You believe for one pair of shoes, he gives you three? Are you mad? Don't get mad. Just keep thinking. That's why prayer and worship has to also come into prayer. Thanksgiving has to come and get involved. You got to get excited. How can I say this without sounding phony? You got to get excited as though you already have it. Take your mind on the canvas of your imagination and say to yourself, how am I going to act once I have it? That's good, that's a guess too. How am I going to act? What is my facial expressions? My acting coach used to always talk about facial expressions. How are your facial expressions? What is your body language going to, what, what is your body language going to communicate once you receive what you, what you believe for? If it's a healing, say you had a, a bump and you go out there, you, you, you believe you receive and you, you gather prayers and you are magnified and thanking God and, 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 and boom, it happened. It's gone. Where'd it go? I don't know and I don't care. It ain't here no more. Praise God. You can make it disappear, go away. The sin of grace is gone. Prayer is not begging God. It's not getting on his nerve. I was always taught almost like we kept on asking, we're going to get it. It's like, I'm, you're going to wear him down. You're going to wear him down. Turn to John, the first John, not the gospel. You know the first one, first, two, second, and third of John. Let's go to first John. And let's go to uh, chapter five. This is John writing this. This is um I get excited when I think about John because he was so close to Jesus. So I, I, I and I believe by the Holy Spirit, it's all accurate. But he was so close to him. You know, he did he did the epistle of John, he did first, second, third of John, and he did Revelation. So John got something to say. Now when I give you this scripture, it's gonna sound a whole lot like Mark 11, 23 and 24. You ready? Read. And this 
is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Look, and if we know they hear us, listen to this, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire him. Then that sound a whole lot like Mark 11, 23, 24. And this is John. John is saying this. This is the confidence. Confidence is just, you almost, you, you're so secure in confidence, you know it's going to happen. If, 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 if it don't happen, something, something's going on, going on, it throw you off, throw your whole mechanism off. If confidence, it, it goes out the door. But confidence is just no. Confidence. I have trust in the matter. Confidence. My wife has confidence her husband coming home every night. If I don't show up, there's an accident or something. Something has happened. But her confidence is that he's going to be there tonight. He go up. She's so confident, she tells the kid, Mom, where daddy at? He'll be here. My confidence. Matter of fact, me and my wife do that all the time. We text her talking, and I say something to her. She said, well, I'll be here. Well, I'm confident when I get there, my wife's going to be there. Confidence. Strong trust. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. John is saying, just like Mark, he said, if we ask anything, now he adds something to it, according to what? His will. His will. According to his will. Somebody said, well, Brother Mitchell, I'll get that later. Well, Brother Mitchell, I know his will. Well, may I suggest you come off cable TV, you come off of Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and you get to this because this is his word, is his will. The will of God is the word of God. This is his, his, his last testament, will and testament that he left for us. If somebody leaves you an inheritance, it's left in what? The will. When I pass, all my earthly possessions goes down to my wife and Divide into the children. That's that being the will. Well, how you know? Daddy said I get his watch. Look, but let's see if it's in the will. Daddy said I go. I can always get the house. How how I know I'm I'm get the house? Let me go check the will. Families, you want to see folks show out? Let death happen. Man, folks going to the house, they, man, mama always said I wanted this. Mama said that, daddy said this. And they just start moving and snatching and grabbing stuff, but nobody looked at the wheel. You can't grab nothing until they sit you down with lawyers and they discuss the wheel. The wheel is gonna let you know what you can't have and what you can't have. Well. I can have, here I come, what I want, what I desire. Why? It's been designated for me according to his will. And if you ever get discouraged, and with being human beings and uh, emotions inside this body, if you ever get discouraged, it goes to will. He said this. He said that. And just read the will. 
read the will out loud so the devil can hear it. It is a two-edged sword. <laughs> Say it out loud. Sickness come. Hit your body. Doctor give you an uh, unfavorable report. Go to the will. Well, the will says on page 1384, I don't know what page, what number is it? Is it 1384 in my book? But 1 Peter 2, 2 and 24 says, For his own self bear our own sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead sin should live unto righteousness. But the most important part is when sickness comes, whose stripes ye were, past tense, healed. I think I received that. I'll take that. Not good enough for you? Go to the wheel. Go to the wheel. Oh! You got it. Multiple statements. I mean, you can go on YouTube. I got uh, one uh, teaching on, I got a hundred scriptures on healing alone. If I was you, if I was dealt with any sickness or disease, I would meditate that. But look at uh, Isaiah 53 and 5. It says, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh, and with his stripes, we are healed. Are? That means I'm healed right now. But I got to believe I receive it. When? Now. I got to make this manifest. So I got to put in my mouth that it can go into my heart and that manifestation take place in my life. I'm talking about, I was talking about the will. Because I've heard a lot of people say, I don't know his will. I don't know God's will in my life. Look in the will. Pray. They show it to you. Because he knows. And he's not trying to keep it a secret to you. He told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, before you entered to your mother's womb, I knew. Yeah. Then he goes back. I believe that's the fifth chapter. Then he goes in 29 and 11. He says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and get you to an expected end. God got great things planned for you. You need to get out, take our time and get to his will. Listen to this. This is, you talk about strong. This is almost make you sound cocky, but you're just confident. It's a, it's a great line between confidence and cocky. It's kind of great. He says, and if we know that he hears us, huh? We know when we pray, he hears us. He says, just like Mark said, he says, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition we desire. Ain't that strong? So you gotta know you got it. In the, in the, look, Mark is being nice about it. He said, believe it. And I'm saying, believe it. John just stepped it up so hard. He said, we know. We know we got it. I believe so strong, I know I'm going to have it. That's, that's strong. That's the confidence. I know my God is showing up. I believe so strong, I know he's showing up. He got an impeccable track record with me. He's never failed me. Confidence. He says, we know that we have the petition. We know that he hears us. You got to know he hears you. You got to know that he hears us. Now, when I'm, I'm in this mode when I'm praying for the sick, I'm building up faith, and I got to know he hears us. I got to know it. According to my faith, I got to know it. According to his word, he hears me. And he's going to ask the petition. That's why I, 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 I almost
Paul switches to another man, the spiritual man starts talking. And he's using words of faith. And it's strong word. And it's, it's bold. It's bold. It's confident. Why? Because I know he hears me. I know he hears me. So I'm confident and I'm bold. Because confidence is going to bring in his twin brother, and that's bold. Confident. Now, I want to deal with um, this begging and, and plead. Uh, let's go to Luke. Because sometimes, and I've been guilty of it, I've been taught that way. If you keep on asking God, he going to he gonna ask. He gonna ask. You keep on asking. Keep on asking. And uh, some Christians have used this as like a model prayer of God, of Jesus sharing us how to pray. And it's not. It's just uh, this right here is talking about relationship. We talked about um, the man who comes at late hour and asks for the bread. Let, let me go to it. It says um, eleven five. Uh, let me go up. Uh, verse number He says, uh, And he said unto them, When you pray, say the Father which is in heaven, we're going to go down. Yeah, five. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? And said to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from where then shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are in bed with me, I cannot rise and give thee. I said to you, Though he will not rise and give him, because he is a friend, yet because of his importunity, importunity, um, that's being persistent, he will rise and give him as many uh, loaves as he needs. So a lot of times in Christianity, in Christendom, we thought that if I go to him, tell him I need, and this is very important, I'm going to manipulate him and make him do it. And that's not what Jesus was teaching. Jesus talked, he used his word, uh, opportunity, talking about relationship. He's talking about um, being persistent. Because that also has two, it, two sides of a coin. It's talking about pleading, but it also speaks about being persistent. And in prayer, I believe we ought to be persistent. But Jesus was teaching about this friend who comes knock on the door and say, hey, uh, Sebastian, I got some company here and we don't have any food and it just came in town and I need to feed them. I'm going to use uh, my God brother uh, for example. Use two of them. I use I, I use uh, uh, Larry, and I'm uh, uh, picking on Bishop Steve. They can come to me at midnight and say, "Listen, Sebastian, I know it's late, but I guess guests just came in, and I need uh, some food to feed them. All the stores are closed, all the restaurants are closed. Can you get up and bring me some food?" He's gonna get it. From when? He gonna get from me now. Now, Melissa's in the bed asleep. The other children in the room, I'm about to call one, but he gets excited about call his name. I, 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 I know my children sleep, but because this is my friend, I'm gonna get up and go give it to you. Because you're my friend. Although it looks crazy, you're out there at midnight, but you got a serious need. As a friend, I'm going to get up and get it. I'm going to get up and get it. And though, although Melissa's in bed asleep, continue to let her sleep, I'm going to get up and go get what you need and give it to you so you won't be embarrassed and you go feed 
your friends. Now, that will show that that example will show us relationship, a friendship, kinship. They've taken that clause or that that passage to make it seem like we just gonna keep on badgering Jesus. After, and this is level five. This is after he was uh, uh, teaching the uh, the Lord's prayer. He taught that on the heels of it. While we're here in Luke, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit. I wanna talk about that lady. I wanna talk about that lady. Eighteen and one. He talked about this par- uh, uh, parable about that uh, ungodly judge. He said in 18, verse 18, um, I can go one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray and not to faint. That's a truly statement he made. Always pray, pray, and don't faint. Now he's not telling you to come in here begging God. It's not what he's saying. So let me let me uh, let me continue on. Saying this, there was a city, a judge which feareth not God, neither regarded man. This judge was a gangster. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearied me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. See what he's looking for? He didn't say you're begging. He didn't say you're harassing. He said your faith. This is what he's looking for. Shall he find faith? Pose a question to yourself. Will Jesus find faith with you? Or because your son, your child, has done something crazy. He's in lockdown now, the judge. He's in court, he's in jail. You think begging and pleading gonna get him out. It's not. You can pray with faith and get him out. But I don't want you to think. As the parable that Jesus stated, he's talking about somebody who don't even have a reference for a God or man. No respect. He was talking about a judge who said, man, I'm tired every day of this old woman coming into my court harassing me about her, about her revenge, about her adversary, about her case. I'm going to just give it to her. I'm tired of it. Every day she's showing up. Uh, docket number one, here she comes. Yes, Yana, I'm back again to plead my case. I need my uh, revenge or my, my case heard. Uh, they got my son in jail. I need to get him out. Day two. Docket, docket three. Yes, Yana, I'm back before your court again. I'm asking for release of my child because he didn't do it. You and I both know he did it. And I need uh, to get uh, my son released. And she come back and back. The judge said, listen, he don't even respect God. He don't honor God, none of his laws, nor men. But that old woman is driving him nuts. So he just go ahead and do it. And some has thought, if I stay with God and I keep, uh, wear, I'll wear him out. No. That's not it. You receive what you believe using your faith and thank him. Oh, that word. Thank him. 
Remember we, uh, a little while ago, maybe we were talking about the power of thinking. Mm -hmm. That's power in thinking. Mm -hmm. With human beings, there's things I receive, Lord Jesus, just by my grandmother teaching me the word thank you. Doors open up for me. Being, being gradually thankful, not faking it. Thank you. People have done things for me. Just getting it to thank you. So, Jesus said, if your natural father know how to give good things, how much more your, your heavenly father? And in that case, this last case, he said, listen, God see your situation. You ain't got to badger him. Just pray in faith. Believe that you receive. And look, when you get your receipt, after you get your receipt, you believe you receive him. In your prayer time, start thinking. Lord, I thank you. For your word told me to believe I receive, I believe I receive. And Father, I want to thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. For opening doors to me that was shut. I know I didn't qualify for the job, Lord Jesus, but you gave it to me. I know I didn't qualify for this one, but Father you gave me favor in my eyes. He gave it to me. Lord, I know my credit was not the part, but you, you open the door and let me receive these things. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for, for, for open doors for you. So, in your prayer time, get the begging out. <clears throat> get begging out. And bring thanksgiving in and pray. I just want to say to you, anyone who has not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm asking you, come to him with a clean heart, your heart as it is, so he can clean it. From your heart, just say, pray this prayer, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, you know who I am. You know where I've been, and you know where I'm going. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. Clean me. Take this, this, this heart that's a stone, make it a flesh. Where there's darkness, bring light. Save me. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. My friend, if you pray that prayer, I'm asking that you reach out to us at Sebastian Mitchell Ministries number eight at gmail.com so we can believe God for your best. Listen, I'm honored to stand before you and share God's word. And we're just going to these series because the Bible says, Romans 117, that the just shall live by faith. I salute you. We say God bless you. See you next week.